Today, we're parallax mapping, and we're gonna take this player bedroom and turn it into this player bedroom. And we're starting right now. When I'm making a map from scratch, I like to go over to Google and look for some reference images. So for here, we'll just type in medieval bedroom, and I'm just gonna go through these images and see if anything can give me some inspiration. Now, our map's going to be 10 tiles by 10 tiles. So in Photoshop, I'm gonna make a new document, change this to pixels, and I'm gonna make this 480 pixels by 480 pixels. Now, if I hit Control H, I'm gonna get this grid pop up, and this grid is in the shape of 48 by 48 pixels. To do this, I've just gone over to edit, down the bottom to preferences, guides, grids, and slices, and comes up with this menu. So I can make a grid line every 48 pixels with subdivisions three. Now I'm gonna be looking back and forth between my reference images on my other monitor and this Photoshop file. Before I even begin to craft the level, I'm gonna sketch it out. Nothing's gonna be fine, it's all gonna be rough, but I'm just gonna sketch out the rough feel of how I'd like the level to feel, look. Now because we're just doing a rough sketch, first I'm gonna create a new layer, I'm gonna change the color to green, and I'm just gonna very vaguely outline three pixels down here, three pixels across here, back around and make a square, and that's gonna be our floor. And I'm gonna go two pixels up, all the way across, back down, that's gonna be our wall. I'm then gonna lightly trace the grid, and then turn the main grid off, because we don't really need to be exact in this sketch. Just gonna make a thicker line over here though, so I know that this is the difference between the floor and the wall. Then, I'm gonna create a new layer, change my brush to black, and just start sketching out how I'd like the level to look. This is somewhere where we can get really rough with how we're sketching. Now we've got the basic sketch of our level done. You could do one of two things from here. You could open up some RTP and then copy and paste directly into your new level. So we could grab this bed and paste it into the scene like this. Grab this cupboard and paste it into the scene like that. And do the same thing for all the furniture and just do it that way. That's not what we're going to do. What we're going to do is a bit different. We're gonna make our own. First things first, we're gonna need some floor tiles, so I'm just gonna quickly turn the grid back on, zoom right into one of these 48 by 48 blocks, and create a new layer. Then, I'm just gonna quickly create a color palette. So I'm gonna go over to brown over here, maybe grab a dark brown. No, oh, actually, I'll grab a medium brown, draw it in a bit. Grab a darker brown, and then grab a lighter brown. Then I'm just gonna do that again. Grab this darker brown and go even darker. Then grab this lighter brown and go even lighter. Now, I wanna highlight this whole 48 by 48 block and I'm just gonna color it in this medium brown color we've got here. Then, I wanna select the darkest brown color I have. Swap this brush over the pencil tool, bring it down to one pixel. I'm just gonna go all the way down along this side all the way down past the second subdivision, all the way down past the third subdivision. We've got a couple of wood planks. Next, what I'm gonna do is in the middle, I'm gonna go across like that, then I'm gonna go across like that, and then go across like that. I'll turn off the grid, and here you can see we've got some wooden planks. They're not the prettiest looking thing. So next thing I'm going to do is grab the magic wand, and I'm gonna click on all of these light brown colors over here. And then I'm gonna go back over to my pixel brush, Gonna select a black, and I'm gonna take the opacity all the way down to let's say four or five. And then with my mouse, I'm just going to go up and down like this. And I'm gonna do that a few times just so I can get a bit of texture in the wood. After I've done that, I'm just gonna make a few darker bits in the wood. So here, I'm just gonna make it look like there's a bit of a crack forming over around the corner over here. I'm just gonna do this the same, just getting some darker areas for all the different planks. Grab the rectangular tool, go three pixels in on this side of the wood, go over to my brush tool, select this medium brown color, and have it play around with darkening the sides of the wood. You'll have to do it a few times to get it right. Zooming out, that looks good. 
Then we're just going to do the same thing with the lighter brown colour. We're just going to grab the other side of the planks. This is going to give it a bit more of a 3D sort of beveled look. Next we want to make sure it tiles. So if I was to grab this right here, hit Control c and Control v and go across, we know it can tile that way. The real test though is can it tile up and down? So if I put it on top here, you'll be able to see we've got this weird little line here. Now to fix this, we're going to go into a new image and make this 48 by 48. We're going to copy this, then we're going to go into Filter, Other, Offset by 24 pixels. And what this is going to do is just offset the picture by 24 pixels each way. Now you can see there's a clear line here. All we need to do is go back to our pencil tool with the 4% opacity, back down to black, and just play around with it till it looks like there's no sort of line in the texture. There we go. It's almost impossible now to tell that there's a line in this texture. So we'll grab this, copy it, take it back over to our original image, and this is now going to be our floor texture. So, I'm going to merge those layers, get rid of my colour palette, turn my grid back on, and I grab this wood texture, create a new group, and I'm just going to call this group Floor Texture. I'm going to paste this wood tile all throughout these different grids. Once we've done that, we can turn it off and see that we've got... I'm going to grab this floor texture and move it to the bottom so we can still see all of our concept art on top. Now we're going to make a lazy wall texture. So, we're going to create a new layer, name it Wall Texture, and grab possibly a lighter brown, something like this. I'm going to highlight the grid, drag across from here. I'm just going to fill that in. I'm just going to drag this underneath our sketch. Next one I'm going to do is go Filter, Noise, Add Noise. And here you can see it adds this sort of texture of different pixels to it. Then I'm going to grab my brush tool, bring the colour down to black, make sure it's the soft round tool, turn off the sketch just so you can see. If I do this, it's just going to be black right across. That's not what we want. What we do want, however, is something more akin to that. Darker shadows towards the bottom. We can also do the same at the top darker shadows towards the top. Next what I'm going to do is swap back over to my normal pencil tool. Still with the black, I'm just going to change the opacity, probably down to something like 20, 30, maybe even 40. And then down along this, I'm just going to make some lines to represent a sort of wooden wall panelling. And that's our lazy wall texture done. Turning our sketch back on, we can see that I've got these sort of railings going across the roof. So we'll make them next. I'm going to turn everything else off. Select the dark brown, a quite a dark brown. Make sure my brush opacity is all the way back up. Just make this railing all the way down. Beam. The word is beam. Now like with our floor tile, we're just going to colour the inside, select the middle, and again change the opacity down to something like four or five. Just add some texture along this wooden beam. Then I'm just going to copy and paste the beam, move it across to the other side. Now I've also got a beam, two beams running through the middle of the room. So I'm then going to copy this, I'm going to flip it 90 degrees clockwise, bring it towards the centre of the room, and delete the sides. I'm going to copy and paste it again. And you can see we've got this beam. And I'll merge all the layers so it doesn't get too messy. I'm just going to copy this wooden beam, paste it and bring it down to where the other wooden beam is supposed to be. If you wanted to, you could also copy and paste it and raise it up here. And there we go. I'm going to merge all those layers and call it wooden beam. And here you can see we've got those wooden beams going across here and across the floor. Now, one thing to notice is these wooden beams, they're actually... They blend in a bit with the rest of it. So what I'm going to do is create a new layer, turn it into a clipping mask, grab my brush tool, and it should only draw over the top of these beams. Now at the moment it's 100% opacity on black, so let's change it. Let's make it 40% opacity. There we go. You can see the beams are a lot darker now. Could even go darker than that if we wished. 
But just one of the final touches is that we're going to select the beams. And when we're selecting the cross beams, we're only going to select the top, not the bottom. I'll show you why in a second. Now I'm going to make these just a teeny bit darker. You see what that does is that the brown on top is a different shade to the brown there. Might be a bit hard to see in video, but it just adds a bit of depth. Looking at our sketch, we can see we do have the outline in this room of some darker wooden beams. So we're just going to make those now. I could go over how to make each different piece of furniture but this video would be ages. So I might go over that in the future, but instead just enjoy this time lapse as I go through making the furniture. Now for the bed, I just decided to go with a simple wooden base and sort of like a white mattress structure. The main thing I had to keep in mind when designing the bed was uh, just making sure there's shadows on the left and right to represent the depth of the mattress. When it came to the blanket, I got a bit too caught up with the design and uh, spent a lot of time shading the blanket. Um, for anyone wanting to know how I know like how to how and where to put the dithers in the pixel art, it's uh, I fucking guess. <laughs> Next, I was just making a simple chest. It was as simple as making a wood texture, making it darker towards the bottom, adding some clips and making some shading below it. There's two sets of cupboards that I'm going to make right here. And again, it's as simple as making a wood texture. After that, it's just about making some different doors and hinges. It's not too complicated in that sense. Uh, the one thing I did do was when I was making the doors, I did just lighten the texture to make them pop out a bit more. Again, the desk, very simple, creating a wood texture. Finally, creating the window. I wanted the texture of the wood to match the beams, so that was easy enough. And then I did just darken the rest of the walls behind it. Uh, then, finally, just a simple lantern in the middle of the room. Now that I've got the level pretty much drawn, I'm going to do some lighting. So for that, I'm going to select all of this coloured part of our area. And I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm just going to call that layer Shadow. I'm going to take my brush tool, set it to the colour black, and give it a pretty decent shadow over the top. Sometimes it can really help if you just colour in that background. Back on this shadow layer, I'm going to move it right below my beams, so my beams aren't in shadow. If I need to shadow them later, I can do that. Next, we can see we've got this little source of light here in the middle of the screen, which comes in the form of a lantern, sort of. So what I'm going to do is get the eraser tool, have it as a soft round erase, start really small, and just erase a, a large portion of the shadow, where I think would be directly underneath the beam. Then I'm just going to slowly increase the size and lower the opacity. Again, lowering the opacity, increasing the size. Then, on top of that, I'm going to make a light layer. So I'll just call that light. I'm going to grab like an orangey yellow and do the same sort of thing but in reverse. So I'm going to down here, right where I think the light's going to be hitting, it's going to be strong like that. Then I'm going to lower the opacity, make the brush a bit wider and make it wide again and lower the opacity again. And because that's really bright, I'm just going to run my eraser over it until it's the right colour. Next we're going to grab this yellow colour, go around the room and add anything that we think might be some highlights.
Lastly, I'm just going to go on to the shadow layer again and just touch up any corners I think might need a bit more shadow. Once we're happy with how the lighting looks, we're ready to throw it into game. Uh, for those of you who don't know how to put the Photoshop files into RPG Maker, there'll be a card appearing on the top right hand corner of the screen, uh, which is my original parallax mapping tutorial. That will show you how to do all the technical stuff. Just before I do put this into Photoshop though, make sure you scroll down and like the video because liking this style of video makes me realise I need to make more of these. Alright, now we've got the map in game and working and as you can see we've got the lighting effects working as we're walking around. The light changes for the character depending on where he goes. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little video. If you did, scroll down and hit like. And if you want some more, hit subscribe. Don't forget to comment down below if you do like this style of video. Catch.